In the last video, we did an overview of the project and celebrated the 100th video of the series. In this video, we are going to set up the dev environment locally for the project and go over some of the changes that I've made to our code base. As you might know, we won't be starting entirely from scratch because we've already built some base foundation in previous videos on which this project will be based on. I did make a few changes and added uh, the front end component, which we'll go over and discuss in just a couple of minutes. The link to this repository is in the description if you want to follow along, and I highly encourage and recommend that you do follow along. On the repository, if we click on the branches here, we see that we have the main branch and the p0 underscore start branch. The P0 stands for the video number that you will see in the thumbnails of the videos and also in the description. This is the first video for the project, but as always we start counting from zero, so that's what the P0 is. Start means the starting point for this lesson if you want to follow along. Some lessons will also have PX underscore end where X is the lesson number that again you will see in the thumbnails or in the description. And the end part simply means the finished version of that lesson. This video does not have one because the start and end would have been the same since we don't make any changes uh, to the code. So you can just use the start branch. So basically to put it simply, if you want to follow along and code along with me, you should use the branch for the lesson that you're watching underscore start. For example, if you're watching a lesson uh, P5, then P5 underscore start would be the starting point of that lesson. If you want to see the finished version of the lesson 5, then you would use the branch for that lesson underscore end, which would be P5 underscore end in that case. The main branch will always have the latest updates on it, and it's going to be the branch that we're going to deploy at the end. I know this might be a bit overkill, but I think this is more organized and fair for everyone. That way, those who want to code along and follow step by step can do so, and those who just want to see the solution for the specific lesson can use the end branch, and those who just want to see the final up-to-date version can use the main branch. All right, so let's clone this repository locally. So we'll go here, we'll copy this, and I am on Windows using WSL2, so I'm going to launch the terminal from the Linux distribution that I use and clone it there. Once that's done, we need to open the project in Code Editor. In my case, I'm using PHPStorm, so we'll use that, but you can use whatever you're comfortable with. This out of the gate should look somewhat familiar to you because we already built most of this in previous lessons. I did make a few adjustments, so let's review the whole thing to refresh our memory and go over some of the new things. So we have the public index.php, which is the entry point to the application. It simply bootstraps our application and routing and then runs the app. The bootstrap.php loads all the necessary things, registers stuff, and creates the app instance and then returns it. Now my ID highlights all of these things. That's because we haven't started the containers and we haven't ran composer install. So these dependencies have not been installed yet. So that's why it's telling us that these classes are not found. But don't worry about that. We'll fix that in a couple of minutes. I've improved the organization a bit in the configs directory by placing some of the config files within the subdirectories like container related configs within the container directory, commands under the commands directory and so on. I've also added this middlewares config file right here, which basically adds necessary middlewares to our app. The new thing that you might notice here is this method call right here where we add the error middleware. This is Slim Framework's default error middleware, which basically does some basic error handling and logging. We're getting the configuration options from the config class and the environment file. We're basically telling SlimPHP whether to display errors on screen, whether or not to log the errors, and whether or not to include the error details within the logs. Later, we might cover some PSR3 logger packages like Monolog, but for now, we'll stick to the default one. You might also notice this new method call on the config class called get. And as you might remember, uh, in the previous lessons where we had the config, we were simply accessing uh, the configuration options using the magic getter method as properties. But we are not doing that anymore. We are accessing them using the get method. I've decided to basically rework the config class to make it so that we can use the dot notation to access all of the config options. 
So if we inspect this config class, we see that we accept the configuration array in the constructor and the get method simply splits the requested string by dot. Then we keep trying to get the proper config option by looping over each item. If at any point it's not set, then we return the default value. If we open the app.php, this is the main configuration file that I've created where we store all of these config options, where we use the EMV superglobal to access the environment variables. And here, let's say we wanted to access the doctrine connection driver configuration option. We could do that by calling the get method and passing doctrine.connection driver. I've also added a few unit tests for this class so you can check that out if you want to. I won't be writing a lot of unit tests for this project because it's time consuming and I don't want to be doing that during the recording and the videos. But I'll try to add some tests behind the scenes and also will ask you to write tests as exercises during the lessons. Today's video is brought to you by Cloudways. Cloudways is a managed hosting provider that takes away all the hassles of server management by emphasizing performance and simplicity. This allows you to focus on more important tasks to grow your business. So whether you're an agency with several clients or a freelance developer, Cloudways is a great option for your hosting needs. Cloudways can host almost every PHP application on several different cloud infrastructures like AWS, DigitalOcean, and so on. So sign up today using the link provided in the description of this video and use my promo code GIO15 to get a $15 hosting credit. The container and container bindings are pretty much the same as before with slight changes. As you can see for the config class entry here, we're passing and requiring the app.php config into the constructor. And if we scroll down a little bit for the twig entry, we are checking if the environment is development using the app environment enum class instead of hard coding it. Also, you might notice some additional extensions here like asset extension and entry files twig extension and some additional entries to the container like webpack and core. This has to do something with the front end stack, so let's talk about and discuss the front end. I thought a lot on how to go about the front end. This course is all about PHP, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on the UI, JavaScript bundling and all that. On the other hand, I also didn't want to load Bootstrap and other dependencies from their CDNs. So I decided to use Node, NPM, and Webpack. If you're using Docker, this will install the Node and NPM for you since I've added that command right here. If not, then please install Node and NPM yourself. It's pretty simple. Just go to their documentation and follow the steps. Now, you don't need to know or learn Node.js or Webpack or anything like that. I will be providing you with everything that you'll need for front-end and I'll be explaining and going over the things that we'll be using. So you don't need to worry about it. Also, you don't have to use Webpack or Node NPM or Bootstrap. You can use whatever you want for the front-end. For this course, the front-end stack does not matter. It's all about PHP. I just decided to use Webpack and NPM because it is something that makes it easier to set things up and use some front-end packages later on that we might need. You might have noticed we have this package.json file here, which contains our front-end dependencies. Think of NPM as like Composer. NPM is a software registry and a package manager. So we are requiring bootstrap, file loader, SAS loader, etc. The thing to pay attention here is this Symfony Webpack and Core package. Configuring and setting up Webpack in its raw form, so to speak, can be challenging and time consuming. Symfony has a component that makes it simpler to integrate Webpack into your applications and provides simple to use API. It basically wraps the Webpack and makes working with JavaScript and CSS bundling and preprocessing much easier. It has a lot of features and if you're interested you can check out the documentation. The links of course will be in the description. Webpack is basically just a module bundler. It makes loading and bundling assets more efficient. When building a website it will probably be using a few front-end libraries which means you will need to load their CSS and JavaScript files in addition to your own CSS and JavaScript files. Maybe you will have some images as well and loading all of those files one by one can be time consuming for browsers. What if some pages don't need all of those files and only use one library or portion of the CSS or JavaScript? There is no need for the browser to load all the other junk just because the page needs the small part of it. Webpack can basically take the necessary CSS and JavaScript files, bundle them, and then shrink them down as much as possible, which makes loading it more efficient. 
There are of course more things to it and it has a lot more features, but in a nutshell, it's just a build tool. All right, so that's Webpack. And then the Symfony's Webpack and Core just basically makes working with Webpack a bit easier. We have this Webpack config.js right here. And this code is pretty much copied from the Symphonies and Chorus documentation. We set the output path to public build directory. And the entries are the JavaScript files that we want to build. JavaScript, CSS, and images are stored within the resources directory. So if we open that up right here, we see we have CSS, images, JavaScript, and then of course views, which contains the Twig templates. If we open the app.js here, we see that it simply imports the app dot scss and then requires the bootstrap scss is the syntax for something called sas which is a css preprocessor and stands for syntactically awesome style sheet webpack is basically able to use sas loaders to load the scss files and then convert them to regular css files during build process let's inspect this app.scss and as you can see it's just a regular css but with additional features we have some nesting here we are able to override and declare variables and so on all right let's open the dashboard.js and as you can see it's empty that we're going to fill in later but for now it simply imports the dashboard scss and again that's just a regular css i don't have anything fancy in there just yet all right, let's go back to webpack config.js. And we basically just went over what these add entry function calls are about. We are bundling everything that app.js needs, like its CSS files that it's importing, and then building it and outputting to public slash build slash app.js. It also outputs the necessary CSS files because we're importing the CSS file within the app.js. So it's going to actually spit out two files within the public build directory, and that will be app.js and app.css. Same applies to the dashboard. It's going to spit out two files, dashboard.js and dashboard.css. Then we call some functions for optimization. We enable versioning so that things are properly cached and then busted when we make changes without the need to do hard refresh within the browser. We're also copying the images from the resources images directory to the public build images directory. I know this is a lot of information and don't worry, you don't need to know all of this. This is just an overview of the overall front end. As I said before, front end will be provided for you during this project. So all you need to worry about is PHP. I'm also going to show you how to build and run the front end piece so that you can actually see the UI in the browser. All right, so let's open the layout twig file so that we can take a look at what our templates look like. As you can see, it's just a basic HTML structure within our Twig template. The only new things that you might notice here are some function calls like the encore entry link tags, encore entry script tags, and then asset function. The encore function is a function that loads all the necessary CSS and JavaScript files for our application. This app right here is the same as the app within the add entry function call in the Webpack config. If we open the dashboard twig template, we see that after including the parent CSS and JavaScript, that's what this parent function call does here. We are calling that function again and are including the dashboard specific CSS and JavaScript. Now for these functions to work, I needed to make some adjustments and pull in some additional packages because we're not using the Symfony framework. We're just using the anchor component without the Symfony framework. If we open the composer.json here and scroll down, we see Symfony Twig Bridge and Symfony Webpack and Core Bundle packages. Twig Bridge basically just provides some functions and extensions that work with other Symfony components like the asset extension, which provides the asset function. Both asset and encore functions take care of versioning and loading the proper up-to-date version CSS, JavaScript, and image files. That is why in the container bindings, we are adding these two extensions right here. Now, these extension classes have some dependencies which cannot be resolved on their own because, again, we're not using the Symfony framework and Symfony bundles or its container and configurations. We are using SlimPHP, so I had to add these two additional entries or definitions to the container which are needed for these extensions to work. It uses uh, something called manifest.json and entrypoints.json files, which get generated by the anchor during the build process. They are just configuration files that basically contain uh, a map to the final version file names. 
you don't need to worry about any of that since it's taken care of for you i'm just going over this with you so that you're aware of what these are all right so let's actually build our containers run composer install and then build the front end to test this out first we need to create the env file so we'll copy env example and create that env let's set the app name to xpennies version 1.0 we'll enable the debug environment is development the database credentials are db root root and then xpennies let's open the terminal we'll cd into the docker directory let's run docker compose up dash d dash dash build and once that's done let's connect to the database so that we can create the xpennies database so we'll open the databases here we'll add a new mysql data source we'll set user to root password root database is nothing for now because we haven't created it yet so let's do that we can add a new schema now and call this xpennies all right let's now go inside our container and uh, run migrations even though we have no migrations just so that it creates the migrations table and we know that it's working so we'll do docker exec dash it xpennies app bash and then we'll do php xpennies migrations migrate and of course it didn't work because i forgot to run composer install so let's run that let's try now and this error is expected it just simply means that uh we don't have any migrations registered yet but the table should have been created and sure enough it's there so now we just need to run the npm commands to build our assets and front end there are three commands that you could use npm run dev builds for development npm run uh, build for production and npm run watch builds and watches for the changes to css and javascript files and when you make a change it automatically rebuilds it so you don't have to run npm run dev after every change i'm going to run npm run dev but before we do that we actually need to install the front end packages and we can do that by using npm install which is similar to composer install so we'll run npm install it's going to pull in all the dependencies and it's going to create a folder here called node modules and we of course exclude that from the repository we don't commit any files from the node modules for the same reason we don't commit vendor directory all right so let's run npm run dev now and as you can see it's running webpack and after it's done it's going to create a build directory within the public directory here as you can see it was created and as you can see it has a bunch of files here including that entry point and manifest uh, json files which are used by the anchor and then it has the app.js and the dashboard.js but it has those little hash uh, extensions here which means that they're just versioned as you can see we also have the images directory with the logo of xpennies application so all is left now is to open the browser and actually visit our site and as you can see it is working and it opened this dashboard page the ui is just a skeleton that we're going to fill in little by little throughout the lessons but this is the main idea we will have some stat cards here showing total expense income and net income then maybe some charts like a donut chart latest transactions on the right side and on the bottom maybe some top categories with most expenses and so on we'll have pages to manage the transactions and categories and so on now this might change uh, and the final version may not look like this but this is what i came up with initially note that i have not built this project yet so i'm kind of building it with you as i'm recording with minimal preparation ahead of time the reason i decided to do that is because i want to kind of plan it and work on it together with you so you expect some mistakes some errors and uh, unplanned changes throughout the videos all right so this is it for the overview of our back end as well as the front end stack as i mentioned before you don't need to know or worry about the front end unless of course you want to know and you want to play around with it if you do want to work with the front end as well then i suggest watching some quick crash course on webpack and sas as well as some javascript if you're not familiar so this is it for this video thank you so much for watching in the next video we're going to do some data modeling and create entities and relationships if you enjoyed this video and are looking forward to the project please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so thanks again and i'll see you in the next one